Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Big Daddy Top Hat here, welcoming you to another edition of Fighting Game Thursday. Last week on this channel, we looked at SNK's Fatal Fury, a game that was released back in 1991 and directed by Takashi Nishiyama, the gentleman who directed the original Street Fighter game released back in 1987. But the links between the history of the Street Fighter franchise and SNK games does not end here, and there are further examples of important fighting games released by SNK that was created by key staff members who would work on the first Street Fighter game. Art of Fighting, the game in question today, is another prime example of this. So, keeping that in mind, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the mad story of Art of Fighting, Street Fighter's half-brother, yeah! As pointed out in last week's video, the original 1987 Street Fighter arcade game has multiple different games that were all conceived as its sequel. These obviously include the forever popular 1991 game Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior, 1989's Final Fight that was at one point test marketed under the title of Street Fighter 2, and of course Fatal Fury, the game directed by Nishiyama which he envisioned as the sequel to his 1987 game. Art of Fighting, the game we are covering today, could also be seen as one of Street Fighter's relatives. This is for multiple reasons, as aside from characters from Art of Fighting going on to appear alongside Street Fighters in Capcom vs SNK games, there are a number of other important reasons too. The game would be directed under the leadership of Hiroshi Matsumoto, a man who had previously worked as the key planner and designer on the original Street Fighter game, who can even be credited for inventing the famous Hadouken. Aside from this though, after leaving Capcom for SNK, he would also go on to work on Fatal Fury, Nishiyama's spiritual sequel to his well-known game. Art of Fighting, a game released by SNK in 1992, just one year after Fatal Fury's release, would be set in the same fictional universe as Fatal Fury, and the game would be set as its prequel. So, therefore, the game's creative lineage ties back to both Street Fighter and Fatal Fury. At first glance, the game shares many similarities with Street Fighter 2, released the previous year by Capcom, in that matches take place between a selection of fighters in two out of three falls encounters, and the characters use various fighting styles and special techniques in order to win. Like Fatal Fury before it, the game was developed to run on Neo Geo MVS hardware, and the player has two basic attacks consisting of both punches and kicks. A third button is used that switches between punches, kicks and throws, and the fourth button is used for executing taunts. Now we've got some obvious similarities out of the way, let's talk about what makes this game different than what came before it. Art of Fighting utilises a feature known as the Spirit Gauge, which is located directly under characters' life bars. Characters within the game can perform special attacks, but as these moves are performed, their spirit gauge depletes, and the lower the gauge gets, the weaker these moves become. Also, players have the opportunity within matches to lower their opponent's spirit gauges. This is achieved by executing taunts, which we briefly mentioned earlier. The Art of Fighting was also the first fighting game ever which allowed players to perform special super attacks, which in this game's case are referred to as super death blows. Super Death Blows, however, cannot simply be performed and instead must be earned by players successfully completing bonus rounds. Probably the most striking feature of the combat that takes place in this game, though, is of course the graphical scaling, a feature that this game would once again bring to the fighting game genre. Essentially, as characters move towards each other, the camera zooms in to maximise the level of detail on screen helping the art of fighting to stand out more from the pack than many fighting games that came before it. Speaking of the game's graphics and art style, it is also of note that Matsumoto opted to include the impressive feature of character sprites in the game appearing more visually cut, bruised and damaged as fights progress. An artistic choice that is emphasised even further when paired with the game's fantastic scaling effect. 
Now we have touched on a few of the game's unique mechanics, I guess we should touch on the game's characters and story. As mentioned, Art of Fighting is set prior to the events of Fatal Fury, taking place back in 1978. In this game, in a single player campaign, you can take control of one of two fighters, either Ryo Sakazaki or Robert Garcia. The plot of this game features both of these young men on a quest to save Ryo's sister Yuri, who has been kidnapped by a man known as Mr. Big, which I guess makes this game canon with the game and movies known as Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. But that would have to be a story for another time. Anyway, Mr. Big took the girl captive to get the attention of a man known as Takuma Sakazaki. Takuma is Ryo's father and the originator of a fictional form of karate that translates as the extreme style. In terms of the style, we will get back to that very shortly, but first, let's look a bit deeper at the game's characters. Regarding the game's characters, as mentioned, only Ryo and Robert are playable in the single player story mode. However, all of the characters are controllable in some way or another between the two players in versus mode. Ryo Sazaki, the game's star character, looks extremely similar to the likes of Ryu and Ken. And during an interview with Takashi Nishiyama, he even stated that Ryo was created as a homage to Ryu from Street Fighter. It is even hard to argue there being an ethical dilemma here, considering Nishiyama and Matsumoto were the gentlemen behind Ryu and Street Fighter in the first place. So really, this makes Ryo to Ryu what ukulele is to Banjo-Kazooie. In contrast to Ryo, the game's co-star Robert Garcia is visually modelled differently to any character from any fighting game previously, and instead was modelled on a combination of Andy Garcia and Steven Seagal. Story-wise, it is said that Robert naturally excelled at martial arts, whereas Ryo, on the other hand, struggled, and could only keep up with Robert due to strict training from his father. In an amusing twist, at a later date when Capcom released the Street Fighter Alpha series, they would include a character known as Dan Hibiki, a bumbling character based off of Ryo due to them seeing him as a ripoff of Ryu. Dan is the master of the so-called strongest fighting style, a technique which clearly pokes fun at the extreme fighting style. As a result, Dan would go on to become a fan favourite in his own right. Fans love the character's humorous design, signature moves and mannerisms, and all of this came about by making a joke about art of fighting. Overall though, even further linking the SNK and Capcom worlds together. Anyway, in Art of Fighting Story mode, Ryo and Robert encounter a range of opponents to test player skills. The first of these is Ryu Haku Toda, a name I am sure many of you will not be happy with how I pronounced. The man fights using the Todo fighting style, a technique he created and teaches. He has a long-standing rivalry with Ryo's father and those who use the extreme style. Art of Fighting, just like Fatal Fury, places a heavier emphasis on story than that of Street Fighter games, which is why this information is somewhat important in helping players understand the game's lore. Players next progress to a bar where they must face off with Jack Turner, a large rotund man who functions as one of Mr. Big's highest ranked subordinates. Linking to Fatal Fury, he is also the leader of a gang who operates in South Town. The game's next opponent is Li Pei Long, a master of Chinese martial arts from Taiwan. The man has neglected his route though to become a street fighter. He is another former adversary of Ryo's father. Now King is an interesting and novel fighter in that when players defeat this sharply dressed French Muay Thai fighter, their shirt pops open to reveal that they have a pair of breasts. King dresses as a man in order to present herself as a reliable fighter, hide her true identity and for various other reasons such as the fact that she has been at war with her own sex for years. One assumes this character was partially inspired by Joan of Arc, what with being French and all. The next match takes place against a muscled boxing opponent known as Mickey Rogers. His backstory is that he was a professional who was expelled from the sport due to accidentally killing a man in the ring. In the game, he stalks South Town looking for opponents to take out his frustrations on. If he dies, 
he dies. The next match takes place against John Crawley, whose character and stage design are both very clear rip-offs of Guile, another one of the most popular characters from the Street Fighter 2 lineup. He is a martial arts instructor, and with his brutal and aggressive fighting style, was known to his friends as the Madman and the Killing Machine. Scary. Once making it through this gauntlet of opponents, players finally reach Mr. Big. Formerly an Army Special Forces officer, he fights skillfully with a pair of Escrima Rattan Sticks. Mr. Big has been involved with the mob for as long as he can remember. As mentioned earlier in the video, Big secretly fears Takuma Sakazaki, the master of the extreme fighting style, which apparently is the reason as to why he's kidnapped his daughter. Not the best idea in my opinion. Upon defeating Mr. Big, he reveals the location of Ryo's sister, but also states that she is being guarded by a stronger fighter. Once Ryo arrives at the location on his motorcycle, he is confronted with the game's final boss, Mr. Karate, who we have discussed a little bit about before on the channel when we covered SVC Chaos a few months back. After defeating this tough opponent who utilises the extreme fighting style, the game ends on a cliffhanger just before the player unmasks this opponent, leaving players to wait for the game's sequel to reveal who the fighter is and what his motivations were. In terms of this hook, for those who have never played this game, I'm going to leave the story here on a cliffhanger myself, which we obviously will revisit when I get around to creating an Art of Fighting 2 video. But this narrative cliffhanger is even further proof of what makes Art of Fighting so unique from the titles that came before it within the fighting game genre. Aside from all of the fighting throughout this game, as very briefly mentioned earlier, fights are interlaced with bonus stages, which occur between every two opponents. These include a bottle cutting stage, where the objective is to cut the top of the five bottles using careful timing, an ice pillar smashing stage, which revolves around breaking ice blocks, and a stage that revolves around players performing super moves, a specific number of times to be allowed to perform super death blows in combat. Successfully completing the earlier bonus stages increases the player's life and spirit bars, so there are rewards all around here. The game would go on to be released on SNK's own Neo Geo AES home platform, along with ports to the Super Nintendo, Sega Mega Drive and PC Engine CD. So let's have a chat about the game's port-in to the non-SNK hardware. The Mega Drive version of the game that saw release in 1994 removed the game's zoom-in effect entirely, and characters and background sprites were made smaller and many of the game's speech samples were removed. Although, to the Mega Drive version's credit, controls could be spread to utilise the system 6 button control pads. Further from this, Mr. Big and Mr. Karate are playable in two-player versus mode from the outset, where as a special code needs to be inputted to make them available in the arcade version. The Western and Japanese versions of the game would differ too, with the AI in the Western version being significantly more difficult to compete against. One would put this down to the same scenario that likely took place with the Western release of Streets of Rage 3, with both games being made more difficult so that players would struggle to beat the game in one sitting when renting the title from Blockbuster Video, a huge nemesis of the Japanese video game industry at the time. Due to everything just mentioned, the Mega Drive version of the game is not as strong as its Neo Geo counterpart, but I guess at least it was available in the home at a much cheaper price point. As expected, like the Mega Drive version of the game, the Super Nintendo version is also gimped. The sprites in this entry still look polished, but the animation is inferior, characters move stiffly, and the collision detection is a little bit more off. The game utilises some scaling effects, but nowhere near to the degree of its arcade counterpart. The only major positive this version really brings is that it has an additional ending scene that reveals the ending to the game's cliffhanger. But we shall save that for another week. The PC Engine CD version of the game was so ambitious that a special arcade card was needed to be able to get the game to run on the basic 80s hardware. The game is pretty much in line with the other console ports of the game, which is not a bad effort at all, considering all things. If you thought Street Fighter 2 was an impressive feat for the PC Engine, then Art of Fighting pushes the hardware one step further. 
All in all, after it is all said and done, I must really commend Matsumoto with the creation of Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury's brother and Street Fighter's half-brother pushed the genre forward in a variety of different ways, and therefore made the game like no other that really come before it. The game's zooming effects are impressive and new, the sprite's ability to display cuts and bruises added to the game's aesthetics, and the introduction of super moves and spirit gauges that depleted as the characters executed special moves brought a whole range of new layers to the fighting game genre. But amongst all of this, the game's story must also be credited for bringing an extra layer of appeal to a style of game that is on the whole not particularly storyline driven. It is without a doubt that at the time of this game's release, The Art of Fighting delivered the most appealing story in fighting game history, which was even punctuated with a cliffhanger to bring players back for the next entry in the series. Street Fighter's half-brother is an important fighting game for a number of reasons, and for this, Art of Fighting should be more celebrated. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the Maz story of Art of Fighting. Let me know in the comment section which fighting game you would like to see me cover next. I am back every week with a new video on the matter. So, if you fancy watching more videos like this, subscribe as I have a whole backlog of videos for you to go back and enjoy. Finally, my channel is partially funded by the generous donations I receive via Patreon. Patrons can earn a credit and a shout out at the end of these videos. These people make working full time on YouTube just that little bit less scary, so I'd like to thank all of you very much for that. Huge shout outs go out to Carl Johnson, Sebastian Veles, SpongeMap B, House of the Ted, JD Robin, Synth Spaces, Andrew Bosansky, Wasabi Quang DX, Michael Baker, Tom Elliott, Computer Man, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Daniel Daly, RetroReversing.com, Dan Barlow Jr., Joel, and all of my other patrons. Thank you so much.